Hello, friends and lovers. My name is Halion, and I am here to talk to you about what I think about Hades 2. Now, why should you care about what I think about Hades 2? Well, you probably shouldn't, but a lot of people do ask me a lot of questions about my opinions on the game and how I feel like it stacks up versus the first game as a content creator for it. I've created almost a thousand YouTube videos on the Hades franchise, and I played the entirety of the early access and for a very long time after 1.0 for Hades 1. So I definitely know the games very well, and therefore you might just want to know what I think, I guess. So this video could be for people who watch the channel already and just kind of want a more concise answer on what I think about it. Or it could be for people who are new here and just kind of want... Uh, Hades started to talk about Hades stuff in some way or another, you know? I mean, if you're just getting into Hades, either now or you have been getting into Hades, you might want to consider subscribing because I definitely churn out a lot of content for Hades. Both just different runs, guides, videos, and just informational stuff. I mean, I just love talking about the games, so and you're definitely going to hear me talk about it. All right, with all that stuff out of the way, why don't we talk about what I think is good about Hades 2 to start? So let's start with something a bit more broad. I think that Supergiant Games, the studio behind the Hades franchise, has managed to pull off creating a sequel that feels both familiar yet distinct. If you look around the different corners of the internet, you'll find that the critiques are split between calling the game too similar to the first or too different. Some say that the game played it too safe and brought back too many of the same features, while some will say they don't like the changes that have been made and wish it was even more like the first game. The fact that these two camps feel fairly equal is probably a good and healthy sign that Hades 2 actually managed to find a decent balance in this argument. I personally really appreciate the changes made to the basic formula, namely in terms of the sprint and the cast mechanics. If it were up to me, I'd probably prefer we saw even more changes, but it still feels like a relatively brand new game to me, aside from like, you know, the boon systems kind of carrying over and a few other things. So about the sprint and cast changes, and yes, I think they need to be talked about jointly. It did take some time for me to adjust to using the sprint over just panic dashing everywhere like in Hades 1. You do need to use the cast in tandem with the dash and sprint in order to keep enemies at bay, since it ensnares and slows down enemies. I think this cooperative system really highlights how deep the combat could be in Hades 2, even while the game is still young. There was a lot of discussion around the pacing and speed of combat when Hades 2 first launched in early access, but it became clear after playing for a decent amount, a lot of that speculation came down to us all having a lack of meta progression and resources, which slowed down the pacing. So let's talk about the meta progression. If you don't know, meta progression in a roguelike are the resources that carry over between runs and how you can make your character stronger with each attempt. I will say that I feel as though Hades 2 is a bit more challenging at first when compared to the first game, and it might take a bit longer to get enough meta progression from the Arcana card system and weapon aspects to feel stronger. But my god, the Arcana cards are just so much more interesting than the Mirror of Night. The system still leaves me wondering what the right choices are even now, and there was so much to experiment with. Chances are we are going to get even more cards in some form or another too, since we have only begun early access. I do think there are some balances, tweaks, and clarifications still needed, but the card system definitely feels a lot more interesting and involved already. So let's talk about the most major addition we have seen so far in early access, the Surface. This has to be the biggest surprise of them all that I don't think anybody saw coming. We're going to have two paths to choose from when starting a run, each with their own distinct zones, enemies, and bosses, essentially doubling the environments we got in Hades 1 by the time the sequel launches in full access. Right now, we only have two biomes on the surface for early access, but the next major update is already supposed to add another. Most likely, they have four planned just like for the Underworld. This is an interesting way to introduce more biomes to the formula, while most other games simply give you a choice of where to go in between each, but something tells me that the two paths are going to be critical to the story, which may be why they're separated. While on the topic of story, as much as I love the more playful and quirky Zagreus from Hades 1, I do appreciate the change of mood that we've had for the sequel. Hades 2 feels like there is a lot more at stake story-wise. Mel's family has been kidnapped and we are out to rescue them or else Kronos might eat them or something. 
I don't want to get too far into it here because of spoilers, but we just have a lot of unanswered questions at the moment around the story, and I am super excited to solve some of these mysteries as the game progresses. So that kind of covers the specific things that I really like that have changed since Hades 1, but Hades 2 has also brought back a signature style that I know we're all glad to see. The portraits, the environments, the music, the voice acting, everything is top notch as we'd expect from Supergiant. Sure, there are some placeholders here and there, but we know that we're not going to be disappointed with that. It's actually kind of insane how much they've stepped up the music personally. We have three different bangers we could hear just for the first boss fight on the surface alone. So overall, Hades 2 is absolutely amazing. It brings something to us that feels familiar, yet distinct, and really delivers on being a sequel to one of the most acclaimed games in recent years. And uh, that's not easy to do. However, it's uh, certainly not perfect as is, I think. So let's talk about where I think it could be improved upon. I should preface this part by saying that the game just launched into early access as of this recording only about a month ago, so a lot of things can and will change. It's healthy to provide constructive feedback for a game like Hades 2, so don't feel like you have to love everything about it. I'm confident that Supergiant is listening and will take action where they deem necessary, so let's make sure we let them know where the game could be improved upon in our eyes. I'm just going to dive right into it since I think it might be the most glaring blemish currently in the game, and that is the Hex system. Hexes have essentially replaced the Call system from Hades 1, but you have to spend a certain amount of magic in order to use the Hex. Each Hex has a randomized skill tree you can upgrade if you get what they call Paths of Stars. The skill tree can increase damage, reduce magic requirements, and more. Now hexes can be good, but I don't think they're in a place where they are actually good often enough. Too many just feel bad, have harsh magic requirements, or need a lot of stars to get to a decent place. Hexes require a lot of investing, but the payoff is just not often there. But the worst part is being forced to start a run by getting a hex in the very first chamber. What you get in that first chamber is so important and that hex is just going to be near useless for probably the next 10 to 15 encounters until you get a build going that uses and regenerates magic. I like the idea behind hexes but I think they need a little bit of restructuring. They don't currently feel worth investing in most of the time since you're always trading something else for the hex upgrades. In a sense, I wonder if runs are simply not long enough to provide enough upgrades to give you a meaningful collection of boons, palms, health, and hex upgrades on top of other things. While hexes have essentially replaced call boons, we also have magic regeneration boons that we have to manage as well, so it's not a one-to-one -one replacement. Maybe hexes would be best served as a guarantee, perhaps by offering them after the first boss each run and providing passive stars after each subsequent boss. I do think hexes are getting close and they are clearly working on them as we speak, so I'm expecting that Supergiant will come up with a reasonable solution soon. My next point might seem small, but I think it's a bigger deal than we realize, and that is the UIs in system presentations. For instance, the Oath of the Unseen is the new Pact of Punishment, but is far less readable at a glance. It's really difficult to gauge how many levels of a particular vow I have on, and if you haven't memorized the icons, trying to read the screen is a nightmare without fiddling with things. I sort of have a pet peeve against any system in a game where you have to highlight the specific item in order to understand what it does, and when there are so many items displayed at once, it makes it very hard to read, unless you're already very, very knowledgeable. The Arcana system has this issue as well, but at least it's more obvious when they're on or off, I guess. I also think that the weapon upgrade system feels unnatural and clunky. Trying to navigate these menus just feels a bit messy and doesn't flow right. Maybe it was best leaving the upgrades with the respective weapon screens like in Hades 1. Speaking of readability, there are still a lot of kinks when it comes to wording and descriptions that could use improvement. For instance, the Strength Arcana card says you get plus 50% damage from it, but it's not actually all damage, it's just some. There's also the distinction between Omegas and I guess what I'll call regular moves. I say I guess because there isn't a specific term for non-Omega moves. They're simply called Attack, Special, or Cast. And descriptions rely on you deciphering the differences between all of them. 
In fact, in the current build, there are multiple instances where the game mentions one, but actually means another, or it just doesn't really mention anything at all, so we have to guess. I'm looking at you, Daybreaker. There are many more examples where something does not quite perform as the description implies, and we don't know if the description is wrong or if the behavior is unintended, yet. Now, I'm not going to moan too much about balance in the game since there is still tons of time for Supergiant to work on that stuff, but I feel like the one thing I have to mention is duo boons. I feel that many are just not what you'd hope or are extremely niche. I believe that getting a duo boon should pretty much always feel good and there should always be at least one that players are seeking for every build. But I don't think that's the case for most in Hades 2 currently, and I find myself just ignoring them most of the time as is, and instead of planning runs around them like I did so often in Hades 1. Now, not everything in the game should be overpowered, but I do think it's wise to give players the ability to become overpowered and reward them for planning and strategizing around getting a difficult upgrade, such as the duo boons. So, here's hoping we get some changes. Okay, one last point I have, which is about the Harris mechanic. In case you don't know, if you reach Oceanus on any of your first three or four runs on a new save file, Eris will show up and give you a debuff that makes you take more damage from then on. She will then appear in Morning Fields for a few runs after that instead, and then in Tartarus until run number 11 or so, at which point she never returns to the Underworld. As much as I enjoy the Easter Egg, this kind of additional difficulty being thrown at me felt bad in an artificial way. I'm glad I wasn't able to beat the game on my first try, but I guess I was hoping it would feel more natural. This is a tough one because no doubt if I didn't have so much experience playing Hades 1, I probably wouldn't have ever seen Eris. Nevertheless, I think she may serve better as an optional challenge rather than a forced one, so just allow us to choose whether to take her debuff or not. I think that's it for the pain points I wanted to talk about, but I want to reiterate that most of these points will almost certainly be altered in some way eventually throughout early access, and what I've said does not mean that the game isn't worth playing as is. I'm really excited to see how things get reshaped as time goes on, so enough complaining. So now that you've heard the things that I wanted to talk about, I figured now is a good time to answer some of the more frequently asked questions I get based around my opinions on the game of Hades 2, so let's check them out. Alright, number one, is Hades 2 harder than Hades 1? Uh, kinda, I think. I, I feel like it took me a little bit longer to get what I call cruising speed, I guess, in Hades 2, you know? Where you kinda get enough meta progression, become familiar with the game, where you just kinda cr start cruising through it, at least at the baseline difficulty, and you don't have to work super hard to get every single win. I felt like it took more meta progression to kinda get to that point. Um... But otherwise, it feels fairly even, you know? I do think Kronos is quite a bit more difficult than Hades in the current build, but that could change. But I think overall, once you get to that cruising speed, they're fairly equal. What do you think about Infusion Boons? Okay, so Infusion Boons are those kind of special boons where each god has a specific one, and you get a bonus, or I guess you just get a boon effect, based on the different elements you're going to hold. I think it's a great idea. It's not something I really saw coming. And theoretically, it'll make us think a lot harder about the boons we choose. We have to look at our elements and just think about the different possibilities around the infusions, what gods we have, etc., etc. It does feel a little thin at the moment. I think we need more ways to sort of interact with those elements, either to gain them or to lose them or to change them out, you know. I think we just need more stuff to kind of work with it, make it a little more interactive and not as flat. And something tells me they have something in the works for it. What do you think about the Chaos Trials? Okay, another great idea that I just 100% did not see coming from them, right? If you don't know the Chaos Trials, they're sort of like these little mini runs where you usually do one zone with a very specific loadout. And while I wasn't super impressed the first like two I did, once I actually got into like the meat of them, you kind of had these crazy wacky loadouts where you got like a bunch of hammers, a bunch of boons, and you kind of got to experiment with these interesting things. And it gave me a lot of inspiration to go and kind of replicate those builds or try to do them in my own way in a real run outside of the trial, you know? It kind of feels like a good replacement for just watching, you know, some crappy YouTuber upload runs of him playing the app. What about co-op? Um, so, I mean, I get asked this one a lot. I guess my opinion on co-op is, I mean, I think it does fit in the game. I think co-op could fit in the game of Hades uh, too, at least here. Is this something that I really desire? Not so much. There's not really 
a lot in it for me to have co-op in the game and i guess if it's left up to me i would rather see them spend that development time on more features or content or quality or something else altogether. just because i don't think i'm gonna make good use of co-op but if they add it in i'll find a way to play it and we'll have some fun okay what's your favorite insert thing here basically <laughs> Uh, well, I like the aspect of pan for the daggers a lot. I guess that could be called my favorite aspect or weapon, I suppose. It's, re it's really hard to pick one of those right now while I'm still experimenting. Uh, for characters, oh boy. I mean, I think Dora has a lot of great lines. Eris is really funny to talk to. She's like the love the hate character, kind of like the Theseus of Hades too. Um, keepsakes, gosh. I mean, I don't know if I feel an attachment to keepsakes. White Antler is kind of fun just to be like that glass cannon style build. And yeah, I mean, outside of that, let's see. Oh, music. Oh, man. I'm going to claw out your eyes and drown you to death. Come on. You got to love that one. What do I want to see added to the game? Oh, boy. Um, I think the more I thought about this question, the more I've come to the realization that more than anything, I just kind of want to get surprised, you know? So... I almost don't want to say too many things out loud because I just really cherish those moments where they introduce a new mechanic or system or whatever to the game. And it's just a total shock. And it's honestly the best memories I have for playing almost any game is just being totally surprised by it. But I guess if I were to ask for one very specific thing, um, there's always like the kind of speed run or just custom mode in the game would be absolutely amazing for speed runners, challenge runners, or just players wanting to experiment and create their own custom little challenges. There's definitely like a lot of possibilities there. And I think it would actually be great for a long-term community if we could kind of have this more custom mode in the game where we get to choose the rules, the layout, the loadout, and a few other features for us. You know, I think that could actually really help build up the community. Did you know that the frog can block the sheep hex? No way. All right, and that's it. Hey, thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, throw a like on it. If you want to talk about Hades or anything, throw a comment on it. If you want to see more Hades crap from me, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. You know the deal. But yeah, I really do appreciate you watching. I appreciate you listening to my opinions. And if you got your own opinions, I'm willing to hear them. I'm willing to understand them. I'd love to listen to them. So make sure you let me know. Thanks one last time, and I'll see you in the next video.